Good morning. So it's Good Friday today, and I uh, I always feel a little bit sad on Good Friday, of course. Jesus has been arrested. And I know that Good Friday is a day where the Bible tells us that he's crucified. But on the early hours of Good Friday, and today's the early hours, it's quarter past five in the morning, and I, I kind of thought that it would be great to read Mark chapter 15, and Mark chapter 15 and see what God says to us. So Father, we want to thank you for the amazing gift of eternal life through your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we want to thank you that you love us so much. Even though we don't deserve it, you love us so much. We call it Good Friday, but it's a Friday that wasn't good for Jesus. So Lord, speak to us by your spirit today. Chapter 15 of Mark, he said very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders, the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin, they made their plans. They made their plans. They discussed it amongst themselves. They made their plans that this Jesus must be crucified, must be put to death. So they bound Jesus, they tied him up, his hands behind him and they led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate says, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you have said so. See, the chief priests had accused him of many things. So again, Pilate said to him, aren't you going to answer? See how many things they're accusing you of? They accused him of blasphemy. They accused him of many, many things, of lying. They probably accused him of being against the Romans. They probably accused him of causing riot, <clears throat> causing a riot, excuse me. Many, many things they accused him of. And Pilate said, are you not gonna defend yourself? It was a custom at that time to release a prisoner whom the people re uh, uh, whom the people requested. Now there was a man named Barabbas who was in prison. Uh, who was in prison at that time, and he had committed murder in the uprising. There had been a, an uprising. There had been a challenge against the Romans. There had been an attack on the soldiers, and Barabbas, who'd been arrested, he was the one that was going to be put to death. He was the one that actually murdered. At that time. The crowd came up and said to Pilate to, to do them what he usually did. So he said to them, well, do you want me to release the king of the Jews? Said Pilate. <laughs> Knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priest had handed Jesus over to him. Pilate knew what the chief priest had done. Pilate was no fool. Sometimes we can condemn Pilate, but Pilate knew that the chief priests and the leaders of the law, that he knew that they were liars. He knew that they were cheaters. He knew that they were only interested in taking care and looking after their own self-interest. He knew. Because Jesus spoke against them. Remember, Jesus went in the temple and he turned over the, the tables of the money lenders. You see, these men who were followers of God, followers of the law, they were interested in only one thing, and that was themselves. But the chief priests, they stirred up the crowd and said, tell him, shout Barabbas' name, shout Barabbas, release Barabbas. 
released by robbers. Tell him and they stirred up, they cried and they caused chaos and maybe they bribed him, I don't know, but they, they got the crowd on side. What shall I do then with the, uh, the one you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked them. Release Barabbas. Barabbas, we want Barabbas. Set Barabbas free. You can imagine Pilate thinking, oh my goodness, what do I do with these people? And when Pilate was there to govern them, then these Jews, these Jewish people, these men and women, these Israelites, followers of the Torah, descended through, through history, through the genealogy of Abraham, and the crowd were at a frenzy. It was Passover time, there were many people and many outsiders had joined and they were all shouting. In fact, probably many of them might not even have known who Jesus was. They'd heard about him, but maybe never had first hand encounter of Jesus. What shall I do then with the one you call the King of Jew the Jews, Pilate asked them. Crucify him! They shouted, kill him, put him to death. Why? Pilate standing there, why? What, what has he done? What crime has he committed? Well, they shouted all the louder, crucify him. Crucify him! Free the robbers! Pilate had a problem then. He had a problem. What would he do? What could he do? They shouted all the louder. Crucify him. Wanting to satisfy, satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them. He knew that if he didn't calm the crowd down, there would be a huge riot. Probably against everything in his own Conscience. He released Barabbas. He took Jesus away and had him flung, flogged. And handed him over to be crucified. Verse 16 of Mark 15 says, The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace. And then they said they called together the whole company of soldiers. Remember this was early in the morning, very early in the morning. All the soldiers that were on duty, they were probably spending the evening board. Nothing to do, and yet, there were men that had to follow orders. But to mock him, really? They put a purple robe on him. Spoke of royalty. Spoke of kingship. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns. Placed it on his head. This caused the crown of thorns, it forced it into his skull, causing such pain. They began to call out to him, 
Hail, King of the Jews. They mocked him. They hated these people. They didn't like them at all. They probably didn't even want to be there. And yet they were under orders, working for Caesar, working under Pontius Pilate, part of the team, part of the, the company of soldiers. They struck him on the side of the head again and again with a stick, a staff, and they spit on him, they abused him. Falling on their knees, ridiculing him, paying homage to him, worshipping him and mocking him. And when they'd mocked him and they'd finished mocking him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. This Jesus, this Son of God, abused, battered, beaten. Then they left, let him out to crucify him. There was a certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, he was passing by on his way in from the country. Imagine just coming to Jerusalem, maybe coming to celebrate Passover, maybe just coming for resting, but he was on his way, he'd probably been traveling all night and they forced him to carry the cross of Jesus. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. They offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but Jesus did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his lot, his clothes, they cast lots to see which each one would get. Now it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. Time here is 20, 20 minutes past five. Three and a half hours later, from now he would be crucified. From early, abused and physically battered and beaten. They put a notice on the cross saying, the King of the Jews. And that was, as far as they were concerned, his, his sentence, his, the reason, because he proclaimed himself to be king and there was only one king, one emperor, one king. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by, they hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, come down from the cross and save yourself. At one moment, any moment at all, Jesus could very clearly have come down from the cross, but the reason he was born was to die. The reason he was born was to give light to the Gentiles, you and I. See, the Jews, they knew God. They had history. But Gentiles, they knew nothing. And God wanted to change that. He realized God loved the world so much. He loved us so much that he did send his son. And his son, Jesus Christ, who was crucified, even to the point, said, Father, not my will, but yours be done. Jesus knew this would be the most horrific, painful death. Because he had the weight of the world's sin on his shoulders. Said the people mocked him, and the, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, they also mocked him amongst themselves. Ha, huh, king of the Jews, ha. Huh. He saved himself, they said, but he, he saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. <laughs> Let this Messiah, 
who calls himself, the people call himself the Messiah. Let this man, let this King of Israel come down from the cross that we may see and believe. And those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Even those at the side of him, Jesus, was abused and accused by everyone. He was alone. He was alone. It says at noon, three hours later, darkness came over the whole land. For three more hours until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Hello! Hello! Lema Sabachthana! Which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of them standing by, still standing by, heard this. They said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine, bring and put it on a staff and offered it Jesus to drink. And, and they said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, they said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion soldier who stood there in front of Jesus saw how he died, he said, surely this man was the son of God. Surely he was who he said he was. Surely he was. He is the son of God. Surely. There were some women watching from a distance and among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the younger and of Joseph and Salome, the women who followed and in Galilee, and in Galilee, these women, they followed him and they cared for his needs many days and many times. And many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were all there. All around, looking and watching and waiting. I wonder where you or I would be. Would we have been mocking him? Would we have left with the others? It seems the only ones left were the ones that truly loved him. Seems the only ones left still knew that anything was possible with this Jesus Christ. It seemed the only ones left were the ones who had so much to be thankful for. And you and I today, we have a decision and a choice to make. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God who was crucified upon a cross stands at the door of our lives and knocks said if you'll open the door of your heart of your life I'll come in and I'll be with you he said if you if you'll come if you'll believe if you'll accept all the sins that you ever committed are completely forgiven because I paid the price on the cross enduring the pain of the cross enduring the power of of the cross and the power of the cross. Was to take Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, into death, into hell. And when he died, he went into the pit of hell and he snatched the keys of hell, of death, from Satan. He said them are mine. He took them and he defeated death. But today, Good Friday, it's a day where we recognize that we played our part in the death of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. And today God wants to ask us, what will you do? Will you believe in my son, Jesus Christ? It 
said it was preparation day, the day before the Sabbath. So as evening was approaching now, Joseph of Aram Arimathea, prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. He went boldly because Joseph, Joseph loved Jesus. Joseph recognized who Jesus was. And yet at this point he, he didn't know. So he did what he could do. And sometimes when we have no answers to what's going on in life and no only questions to our situation, do the next best thing. And what, what Joseph did, he honoured this Jesus. He honoured him. And in confidence and strength, he went to Pilate. With boldness, he said. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. He called the centurion to him and he asked him also if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he said to Joseph, yes, take the body. See, Pilate still had total authority. He didn't want to put him to death. That wasn't Pilate's choice and so Pilate he still had great respect for this man. You could imagine Pilate not really, really understanding what was going on, but you know, he did the next best thing and he handed the body over to Joseph. And in life we go through so many things and we really do not understand what's going on. But the, let's do the next best thing. Let's call on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's call on our Father in Heaven. Let's pray. Let's still believe. Let's respect this good news that God has given us. Joseph went and brought some linen from home. And with some help, he took down the body of Jesus lifeless, dead. He wrapped the body in the linen and he placed it in a tomb that had been cut out of rock. This tomb had been prepared for burial. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, they saw where he was laid. They saw the tomb and then they went away, weeping, mourning for Jesus, the Son of God, for Jesus, this man, who they seen open the eyes of the blind and the, the ears of the deaf. This man who told he told the invalids, the people who could not walk to walk. The people who lost hope, he gave them hope. You know, many times in life. We can come to a point where we lose hope. I want to tell you that we are very, very blessed because we know the full story of Easter, but these people didn't. And they went away wondering. The disciples had scattered. They were afraid. Their master, their friend had been brutally murdered. They saw with their own eyes. And they were bitterly 
Big Silent. Great Shrek. We can only read the words. But the pain of that cross. The pain of seeing the one that you love crucified. The same pain of seeing the one that you love. People hurling insults at him. Spitting on him, beating him. And now he lay in the tomb. With a storm. It was very late in the evening and now, in, the, in an hour or so, it would be Sabbath, the Sabbath day, where the people would go to the synagogue. Imagine on the Sabbath they would go to the synagogue and worship God and read the Torah. Could you imagine what the mood would have been like? Could you imagine what the conversation would have been like on that Sabbath day? Could you imagine the words that the leaders, the priests, chief priests and those who had condemned Jesus to death? Could you imagine what they would try to do to try and justify their actions? Jesus died across and now he's sleeping in the tomb. But all around them, there would have been a storm. It reminds me of the time when Jesus and the disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee. They're crossing and the storm welled up and Jesus was fast asleep. But all around was chaos and the disciples were panicking and grief stricken and they were terrified these fishermen and they yelled and screamed at Jesus don't you care if we're going to die <laughs> and they woke Jesus up from his sleep wow that's just such a picture of this Easter time that Jesus is now sleeping And all around him is chaos. There's a storm that is so violent. There's a storm that the soldiers would have to work overtime to try and keep control and try and keep order. And it's as if Jesus is sleeping in the tomb behind the storm. Isn't that an interesting picture of what's going on? Don't you care if we all drown? Don't you care if we all die? Said to the disciples to Jesus. And when he finally woke up, they woke him up, he stood up and said, Peace. Be still. Oh, I'm so excited for Easter Sunday now. I'm so excited to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But we must leave it here for now. Good Friday. You know, yesterday was called Monday, Thursday, and Jesus said to his disciples, before he was crucified, before he was arrested, even he said to them, a new commandment I give to you love one another as I have loved, loved you because he knew what was coming and he knew that the disciples would need each other and believe us, you and I we need each other and Satan, the enemy and the people of this world will do their utmost to cause havoc and cause arguing and cause division amongst us and Jesus Christ, the Son of God says only believe I want to close with this prayer. Father, 
Father, thank you for this Good Friday message. In a way, we're left hanging a little bit. We're left wanting, Father. But maybe that's just where you want us to leave it today. Where we can just look at our lives and we can see it. Are we in our lives? Is there a storm all around us? And is Jesus asleep? Whether in a boat or whether in a tomb. Father, I pray for anyone listening or watching this video that may not know you or have may have fallen short and may have got caught up in the storm and lost sight of you, that you would, ref that you would refresh them you would come close to them, you would show them, you would encourage them and you would strengthen them, Lord. That faith would rise and that, Lord God, that they would believe again and they wouldn't be overwhelmed by the storm and the chaos of life, but, Lord God, they would be embracing, they would, uh, their eyes would be open and they would see the truth of the Scripture. For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. Open that door today. Invite Jesus in. Eternal life. Was well, very costly, but for you and I, if we would only believe it's all been paid for. It's a free gift. May God bless you. May God strengthen you. May God be close to you and speak to you. Amen.